a few words about the, the history of the idea and of the word. Um, the, the, the concept and the word itself came from a, the publication of FAO for a 2010 conference on agriculture, food security and, and climate change organized by the Netherlands in The Hague. The, the idea was that from an international perspective, climate change, food security are dealt in very different arenas and in very different ways. And in the field, uh, you have to address all these concerns at the same time, along with some other concerns, of course. But food security and climate change also bring a, a time perspective. You need to project yourself in the future to address them. This is why you, you cannot really properly address one or the other of these topics without taking into account the others, which is why we needed to have this kind of global approach. And the word itself, Climate Smart Agriculture, was only with the title of the publication at that time, and now it, it, it had the fortune that, that you know. So, uh, Agriculture has to address a triple challenge in, in the years to come. It has to produce more food in quantity, quality and diversity. It has to adapt to climate change and it has to adapt to climate change in order to provide this additional food. And it also has to contribute to, to climate change. Uh, very briefly, we should not forget that there are still 842 million hungry people in, in the world and keep in mind this map because when you cross it with the map of the impacts of climate change some of the countries where you have the most hungry people now are also some of the countries which will be the more impacted. So a growing not only are there 842 million hungry people now plus a billion malnourished but there is also a growing demand with the increase of population and the change of diets and in some countries population will double or more and some of these countries are all also the ones which are the most impacted by climate change. This is why FAO estimates that global agricultural production will have to increase by 60 percent to satisfy an increased demand and at the same time you have the impacts of climate change, the global increase of temperature but when you speak about global increase of temperature Keep in mind that this is an average. Temperature will increase more on the continents and especially more on some continents or some areas of these continents. So the impact will be greater in some areas. A very important impact for agricultural production is that not only temperature will increase, but it will be the uh, the anomaly temperature, the, the spread of temperature, the variability of it will increase. These two examples in South Africa and Peru show that not only the average is moving, but the differences are, are getting more important, which makes it even more difficult to ensure the stability of production. Um, the you have the same type of effect with the changes in precipitation. Globally, according to the IPCC, dry areas will get drier, wet areas will get wetter, dry months will get drier, and wet months will get even wetter. And when you cross the impact of changes in precipitation with the availability of water, groundwater or, or surface water, once again you have more impact in some areas where you already have water scarcity. We, when we look in the future and even now in, in some areas, sea level rise also has an important impact, especially in some areas which are crucial for food security, for instance um, rice growing areas in Bangladesh. And some impacts are much more difficult to modelize, which are the impacts on ecosystems. I took the example of a bee because the survival of flowers and bees are linked to the fact that their life cycles are going on, on the same timelines. If one of the group of species adapt differently to climate change than the other, then both will die. 
and it's much more difficult to have an idea of um, the impacts of climate change on whole ecosystems because various parts of the ecosystems will behave differently, which also means that we have less visibility on what's going to happen in terms of pests and diseases because they will adapt differently than their hosts and their hosts differently than the pests and diseases. All this means more variability, more uncertainties, more changes, some of which are predictable, some of which are not predictable. And these will have main effects on agricultural production. Decrease of production in certain areas, changes in the geography of productions, and increased variability. We already experience these effects and especially the increase of variability. This is an example of projected yields in Morocco where globally the yields of irrigated crops will not decrease that much or even increase with, with technology, but some of rain-fed crops will be clearly heavily affected. So it will depend also on the availability of water for irrigation, of course. This is another example taken from, from a, a, an amazing uh, study in Brazil, which shows that the areas of production of the main crops are going to move to adapt to, to climate change. The areas where it will be possible to grow coffee in green on the left side will no more be able to grow coffee in 2070, but there will be other areas where right now it's not possible to grow coffee, where it will be possible to grow coffee. This means that the whole system around coffee production, input, output, transformation, practices to grow coffee will have to change and to move to a new area. And globally, th this is a map from the IPCC report 2007, productivity uh, will be lower in uh, lower latitudes and, and in red here, and higher in, in some uh, northern areas. The important point is that where productivity is going to be lower are both countries which are already experiencing food insecurity and where there will be high population increase, but also some areas which are important exporters and so which are essential for global food security. <laughs> so what we know, what we attempt to, to, to figure out uh, in terms of impacts on food and nutrition security is clearly more impacts on the most vulnerable countries. On the most vulnerable people, this has been underlined by, by a report by the HLP for the Committee, World Committee on Food Security, and also impacts on malnutrition, which are a bit more difficult uh, to envisage because we, we have some uh, quite accurate modeling on staple crops, but much less is known on fruits, on vegetables, and on wild foods, which play an important role in certain countries. Um, agriculture is also, agriculture and food systems in general, uh, are also an important source of greenhouse gas emissions. According to the last IPCC report just released, agriculture, including land use change and deforestation, contributes to 24-25% of the anthropogenic uh, greenhouse gas emissions, to which you could add something like 2% which are accounted for in energy or in industry for the production of fertilizers and various inputs. So globally, a quarter of the emissions uh, from uh, human sources are linked to agriculture. The main sources are deforestation, livestock, nutrient management, and methane for paddy rice. So, one, one of the, the, there are two very important points to, to underline when you consider emissions from agriculture. Most of them are coming from biological processes, so they are 
more difficult to monitor and, and to control than industrial sources, for instance. Another important uh, point is that they are linked to the use of various resources, which means that the more efficiently you use the resources, the more food you produce and the less emissions you have. Uh, nutrients which are not used by the plant result in greenhouse gas emissions and in other pollution like water pollution. A cow which is producing more efficiently produces more milk for the same amount of methane, for instance. Another important point to underline is that agriculture can also stop carbon in the soil and, and in biomass. So this means that there are globally two ways to mitigate. The first one is to reduce emissions per kilo of output, increasing production without the same increase of emissions, being more efficient in the way you use land, in the way you use nutrients. And the other way is to enhance agricultural soil carbon sinks. So globally, to produce more food, to adapt to climate change, and to contribute to mitigation, agricultural systems and food systems in general have to be more resource efficient, use less land, water, and inputs to produce more food sustainably, and they also have to be more resilient to change variability and shocks. This is precisely what we call climate smart agriculture a system which is more resource efficient and more resilient. All food systems, all farming systems have to get more efficient and more resilient. And, and then how do you get there? To get there, there are agricultural practices and Sonia is going to talk about it after my presentation, but you also need policies and institutions and finance these two aspects will be uh, talked about in the next webinar by Leslie Lipper from FAO and Siwam Sangi from uh, IFPRI. Climate smart agriculture is how to transform agriculture to make it more efficient and more resilient to produce more food, adapt to climate change and contribute to mitigation by using the right practices, policies, institutions and finance to get there.